again and we bring on stage here um, Mark Janssen from um, actually two companies, right? Mundialis and Terrestris. You'll be by yourself. Will Till also be uh, coming? Yeah, he's supposed to be coming as well. But in case he misses this uh, schedule, then uh, I, I can always do it alone. Of course. And um, well, it will be easy for you. Or you um, at least uh, we'll, we'll be playing a pre-recorded video. Um, but I still will um, introduce you. You uh, are going to present optimized publisher map the data service with you, sir, with you, Styler. And well, Mark is uh, he's from Bonn, Germany. He's general manager at Terrestris and Mondialis, and he is. Uh, Long-time architect and developer for a range of uh, front-end uh, technologies. Uh, you may know him as core contributor with OSGEO projects like OpenLayers, GeoX, GeoStyler, and he's a frequent speaker at conferences. He conducts workshops. Um, and yeah, the other speaker is uh, because they will present uh, with the two of them in the video. So. Well, Till Adams, also from Bonn, Germany, he's uh, the founder of uh, both Terrestris and Mondialis, where he acts as a consultant and uh, agile coach. He's co-founder of the FOSGIS conference. That's a yearly conference of all uh, German-speaking so-called DAG uh, countries. And he joined OSGEO early and presently he's a member of the OSGEO board. And Still chaired the FOS4G 2016 in Bonn, which was a great conference as well. So, um, and I think both gentlemen or just Till support the same football team with the acronym BVB. No, I'm I'm a I'm a goatee supporter. I'm I'm FC Cologne. Okay, that's good. Um, diversity. Um, <laughs> So without further ado, I will uh, start uh, the video and hope that's, that is all well. Let's see, Till is here. Hi. Welcome. Sorry, okay. I was yeah, a little late. Can... I had another talk. <laughs> no, no, that's that's fine. You can lean back and um, we'll, yeah. we'll try to play the, the video file. Take some Make... popcorn. Um, here we go. Hello from Bonn, we are Till Adams and Mark Janssen, and we're going to present the talk about optimized publishing of maps and data services with the GeoServer, GeoStyler, and MapProxy. The talk is not really for developers. I think it's better for, um, for users of the software, and we're going to show how you can do really fast and nice uh, web map services with the three components. And in the end, we're going to show a little bit an example. Um, so which road do we take? First of all, we talk a little bit about ourselves, but really short and a little bit also about the talk. Um, we're going to present the components I've mentioned before. And um, we're going to talk a little bit about optimization in style and performance. And for this, we really have cool components we want to present you. And at the end, we're going to try to sum up the whole stuff and um, give you some uh, one example at least, and uh, also the URL to the example so you can you can see on your own. So about us, um, first of all, I'm uh, Till Adams. I'm a shareholder of the company of Terrestris. Uh, I had the honor to chair the global Phosphor G conference in 2016 in Bonn. So I know about the work that the organizers had before. Um, Actually, I'm a board member and I work mainly as a consultant and agile coach. Let me also present Mark Janssen, our, my colleague. We worked together for nearly 15, 70, 80 years. I don't know exactly. Mark took over the management of Terrestris and also of Mondialis, another company I, I found with my partners a few years ago. He's uh, also a OSGEO charter member. And he's quite active in uh, some uh, very famous open source projects like Open Layers, GeoXT. He's in the project steering committee and the core developer 
And so he really has a development, a technical background. So that's the reason why he's going to talk about more the technical stuff. And I just do the framework around that. We come from the company of Terrestris. Um, we are an open source GIS service provider located in, in Bonn in, in Germany. We started actually in 2002. And from the beginning on, we focused on open source uh, software, started with uh, human map servers, stuff like that. And yeah, our main business is uh, planning, development of projects, but we also do some consulting, support, trainees. And last but not least, we provide a, uh, in the meantime, really popular free OpenStreetMap-based WMS, which is uh, worldwide, and I'm going to show that later as, uh, as our example. So about this talk, we're going to talk about first why this talk. And um, I think most of you have heard before about GeoServer, MapProxy, maybe even some of you heard about GeoStyler. But um, um, I think I, I said it before, it's really important. This talk is really for you as users and not so much for, for the developers. And um, if you, if you look back a few years, I think in the meantime, it's really easy to create a simple WMS with open source tools. If you just install GeoServer, for instance, you have a backend, you go in the backend, configure your, your WMS. But if you look at that WMS, you, you almost would see that styling is still a topic and um, performance in regards of, of map services in the web is always a topic. So um, we're gonna show how to set up a well-designed and fast WMS service. And this is still also very often a topic. We as a company, we get requests. Recently, we, we set up a really high performance um, city map, background map for the city of Stuttgart and, and other um, uh, customers we had. So, and what we really want to show you is um, a little bit of our experience. But of course, what we're going to present is not the one and only solution. In, in German, you say there are many ways to roam, um, but uh, of course, there are also other solutions in the uh, open source uh, Cosmos you can use. But what we're going to show um, where we really made um, experience with, and we want to share the experience of this talk with you. If we scan the title for buzzwords or for the components, um, you, you, you've seen the logos of the, the components we're going to use. It's GeoServer, it's GeoStyler. Probably you didn't hear about that yet, but this is really a cool tool and, uh, and map proxy uh, in the end. Okay, and these are the more technical stuff. Um, so I hand over to Mark, my colleague. Yeah, thank you, Till, for this nice introduction. So as Till said, I'm going to present you the uh, components that make up this stack that we will present. Um, first off is GeoServer. So you might have already heard about GeoServer. It's an awesome OGC, OGC compliant server for geodata. Uh, it's written in Java mostly and is really, really a great tool to basically take any sort of geodata that you have. And uh, by using GeoServer, you can take this data and produce a lot of great services that you can then use to mix up your own applications. So it's really, really widely used. There's some other tools that basically do the same thing, but have a different technology stack. So human map server usually comes to mind or degree. Um, so I already said it, with GeoServer, you're basically free to use your input, your data in the way it is stored wherever it is. So you can use vector files, for example, shape files, uh, raster data, but of course you can also connect to databases, my most beloved one, PostGIS, for example, or also proprietary ones, MS SQL or Oracle. And many people do not know that, but um, it's also possible to connect GeoServer to another server that is already producing uh, compliant services like WMS and WFS. So it's possible to pipe through the output of one server over to GeoServer and then benefit from all the cool stuff that GeoServer has under the hood. So GeoServer can read a lot of data. That is what we have just learned and make sure to also see the great talks over at uh, this conference where more 
core members of GeoServer development team will explain in detail what they do and how they do it and the changes of the last versions. But GeoServer not only consumes a lot of data, it also produces a lot of services. So the most important one probably is the WMS, the uh, smallest denominator that many people can agree on. So it can produce WMS with WFS for data, web coverage services for raster data, for example, and WPS and a lot more. So now we know that we um, can publish a map and a data service. So are we already done or is it not optimized yet? So, well, it can produce maps. That's what I already said, but uh, by default, it just uses the default styling. So in order to make an optimized service, um, there's, yeah, you will have to take some time to configure the layout and the, the looking of your map, of, your, of the cartography, basically. So inside of um, GeoServer, you use SLD style layer descriptors to do this. There are other options um, like um, Carto CSS, for example, or um, other, other um, ways to provide your style. But internally styled layer descriptor SLD is always used, which is XML, which is sometimes a PITA. And um, this is where GeoStyler comes into play. So GeoStyler, there is a data dedicated talk by Jan Zulemann, a colleague from Terrestris, uh, later this day. Um, it's not an application, it's a library. It has, um, well, basically it's, it's, it's about two things. It can read and write a lot of styling formats. Um, and it also provides some components that you can use to uh, create new styles. Um, so in case you want to style some uh, thematic data, for example, you can connect your data source to GeoStyler and then, you know, like make a, a, a nice uh, thematic cartographic uh, style for your map. So make sure to watch that talk by Jan for more details. So GeoStyler um, can help you to create filters and classifications for your map. It has the possibility to uh, define different styles for the different ranges and it can calculate so if you're basic if you are creating a class based or a classification and those uh, thresholds aren't you know like uh, are overlapping each other then you can have uh, the calculation how many features are in both of them and so on and so forth it can be used standalone or it can be uh, used or integrated in basically any um yeah web map that you want to do or yeah, application. So it can read a lot of stuff. It can read the QGIS style, for example, the style from open layers, partly at least, map box styles, maps over map files. There's a dedicated talk by Mr. Benjamin Teuscher. Um, I think that was already I'm on Monday, I guess. And it's easy to also create new um, formats if you want to. So in case your favorite styling format isn't on this list, yeah, just write your own styler, it's easy. This is how it can look like. I'm not going to go into too much detail. Again, there is this dedicated talk. It makes it easier to work with this XML and all the others, uh, all the other styling formats. This is how they can see a classification and also um, yeah, a preview where all the classes are being applied on some map. And as we are talking about GeoServer and GeoStyler, there is also a GeoStyler plugin so that the styling, which has improved greatly in GeoServer, um, can be made even more uh, yeah, comfortable by using this GeoStyler plugin. Then you can use GeoStyler directly in your GeoServer user interface. So now we're done, right, aren't we? Uh, because we have a good looking map now, it's served and styled, everything is fine. Oh no, I'm sad to say uh, we're not ready. Um, because one core feature of all map services should be the performance and one Thing to increase the performance of, um, yeah, basically static data or ones that doesn't um, yeah, change too often, uh, is caching of maps or single tiles. So in case you expect a lot of requests or you have a lot of layers that you want to group together, or if you're already experiencing uh, performance problems or your server is, very, is always under very, very uh, have a heavy um, work, um, then caching of maps might be a good idea. So there's basically two options. Well, that's a simplification already. 
there's a lot uh, of options that you have to cache your WMS. Um, we will have a very brief look at two of them. One is GeoWeb Cache, uh, integrated into GeoServer, but also uh, possible to run standalone. And the other one is Map Proxy. So GeoWeb Cache, I already said it, you can use it directly from GeoServer. It's a nice tool, it can read a lot of sources, and it will basically on the fly create um, your cache while, you are, while someone is using your WMS server. Um, Map proxy, on the other hand, is not integrated into GeoServer, but it can be deployed on any service and it can read a lot, a lot of sources. So it's not bound to the WMS that you have in GeoServer. You can combine different sources. And it also puts out another, um, um, yeah, puts out a lot of um, services. Also well documented in a great API. So this is the basic principle. Connect map proxy in the middle of this picture to any WMS or tile server. And every GIS client can just use the WMS interface and yeah, get the data, but it's faster now because that cache is done by map proxy. So cool functions are um, you can create a, well, of your, of your WMS, you can create color changed versions. So one very easy way is to use a gray version of some colorful background map, for example. You can use, um, well, you can use one cache for several projections. Um, the storage is very greatly optimized. So for example, if you have a worldwide map with a lot of oceans in between, so there should be a lot of uh, tiles where, which basically are blue, um, but in map proxy, proxy, there will only be one blue tile stored on the disk and then you, uh, be presented with that when, whenever it's needed. Um, the security layer is quite cool. So you can, for example, clip layers uh, in map proxy to a boundary, let's say the boundary of um, yeah, Buenos Aires, why not? So this is an attempt of a comparison of those two great software projects. I'm, uh, well, you have to look at them both. And since they are both open source, it's no problem to do it. Um, I said a lot of it already. So GeoWebCache um, is built in while MapProxy isn't, but that isn't a, a big problem. But the, the, the learning curve might be harder, a tiny bit harder for people that want to try out MapProxy, but rest assured the documentation is great. So one thing that MapProxy basically does better, better than GeoWebCache is it is always a fully compliant WMS and it can also stretch uh, in between zoom levels. So your cache always has fixed zoom levels. And if one WMS request would result in a zoom level or a resolution that is between two, um, between two cache tiles, then map proxy is able to um, yeah, interpolate tiles uh, in case it is um, yeah, do, yeah, doable without too much loss of information. So a, a bit oversimplified GWeb cache WMS um, in order to work the direct integration, you have to have some specific parameter inside the WMS request, which is tiled equals true. Inside of the documentation, there is some way of, you know, like turning this off, but there's a couple of things that you need to do in order to get GWeb Cache really, really greatly working. Well, MapProxy was proved easier for us. Yeah, so now it's time for Till to take over and show one example of how this can work all together. Okay, thank you, Mark, um, for the technical presentation of the components and a lot of insights into the components. Um, and I'm going to show you now uh, one example. This is, as mentioned before, our free to use worldwide OpenStreetMap based WMS. To be honest, it's not only free, there's also a premium version, but if you go on the website, you find the URL and you can in directly include this um, WMS service into your um, applications. And um, if we switch over to our demo page, we see um, the map around here and a very simple web mapping client. And you see it's, it's really nice, fast reacting um, WMS. Um, the tiles are served by map proxy. Uh, in the background, we have geo server. We have a lot of styles. Um, yeah, to be really, really honest, I must say that we didn't really do the styles with uh, geo styler because we started the project with the um, with the uh, uh, WMS service a um, little earlier than we started the GeoStyler project, but it's still possible to do 
things you can see here also with the uh, with with GeoStyler. Yeah, and that's um, the Zoom to Buenos Aires, the place where we all would like okay. to be in the moment. That's it's, at the uh, end. You can see also not possible. small. Like um, the if you go on that page, services, um, but I think OWS terrestrial.de, we um, we've linked uh, it in right the slides. That you can directly moment see and, and try out yeah, the, at the end. Um, the service and also some other services around and they're all based on the same technology and quite nice looking pre pretty fast uh, services here i could say and now you're really done you can really have all the tools and some ideas how to produce and optimize uh, map services or data services out of your data and um, yeah at the end we can say okay Everything it's it's open, so cool software. We can do a lot of it. We we've seen that um, various open source components are are quite nice combinable. Although there is a map proxy community, a geo server community, geo styler community, we can stick it all together into one running uh, environment. And um, of course, there's often more than one component to reach your goal of course you can use the same software stack and instead using geo server you can use human map server or degree or even proprietary software um, and i think the presented architecture has already proven its suitability for setting up a good looking fast robust map services i think you, you you've seen the example and um, i think that stands for itself here's mark again so thank you for listening to our talk and um, yeah again our contact if you have any questions or whatever you have yeah well very nicely uh done video uh, and uh except the the end of the video <laughs> sorry i probably i just missed to to delete a piece of uh, of the video so there were overlapping voices oh i thought i heard voices in my head so okay <laughs> so we're all saying <laughs> um uh, thanks uh, very much it's uh, yeah on time and uh, let's see um if we have some questions from the audience um yeah, we have at least two questions. I bring them into the into the banner. So the first question is, I'll, I'll read it. OTC API, will, will there be support for the approved feature API in the near future? Contact. I'm not sure. Well, maybe you can make something out of this. Yes, I'm. I'm pretty well. I have. I have an idea of what what is probably meant. So we showed several components, and um, I I think only two components can be considered when when this question with regard to OGC API uh, is being considered. So the first one is GeoServer, which we showed to be basically our yeah map providing or map backend, if you want so. Thank and uh, you. there is already there is already a. Um, uh, an extension for GeoServer to well to support the current uh, currently discussed and still in in, in shape in shape um, well not finalized uh, API. Uh, so mm -hmm. if you use GeoServer, there's a big chance that you can install this extension. Um, I also can post the link in the uh, in the chat later on. I've, I've got it here. Um, that's one thing. And the second thing would be whether um, Map Proxy our pro caching solution or one of the solutions that are possible um, whether it will support OGC API features or maps or tiles so right now there is no such support let's say for OGC API tiles which is basically the successor of WMTS and stuff like that um, it's still being shaped up and um, well also the, the specification Right now, there is no concrete effort that I know of to have it implemented in Map Proxy, but this can change. So, um, in case there are enough interested parties, just raise an issue, open issue over there. And as always, and as the the speaker before us uh, has told, it's it's always a, a part of, of funding. Right now, we yeah, don't right. have the immediate demand for it on ourselves. So in case someone uh, yeah, opens up his head or lets the head go around and some enough people put in some funding, then we can, of course, make it happen as a community.
Yeah, sure. Now, I, and I think there's even an open, long-standing open issue on the uh, Map Proxy uh, repository for support for uh, vector tiles. But that's uh, yeah. I there's think actually even the Map Box uh, vector tiles, but for the would be interesting also for the OTC. Yeah. API so there's a lot of there's a lot, excuse me, just for interrupting you twice, sorry. Yeah, no. uh, it's hard, it's hard with the, you know, like the lagging, whatever. Uh, so there's a, there's a couple of open, so, uh, um, of open uh, issues or um, PRs over at Map Proxy. So also, as always, when I'm presenting something like this, this is not just for consumers, it's also for makers, it's for people that want to participate. It's easy to start and it's exceptionally easy to start with Map Proxy because it's just Python, you know, everybody knows Python. And to just dig yourself into that code and help us all by, um, by uh, yeah, submitting some pull requests or reviewing something and testing it out in your environment. That would be much appreciated. Yeah, sure. And there's a... Uh... Another question here. Um, is it interesting as a city to map proxy the regional OWS? What should be the interests? Um, Pro probably the, the, the I understand the question as if it makes sense to uh, to cache the um, WMS of a, of a city. And um, in general, I always would uh, agree on that because um, it, it's not only performance that you you win, um, but it's also you <clears throat> you get um, lesser load on your servers because not every time a request goes to the OVS uh, OWS, um, uh, you have to produce an image because you, Map Proxy just goes in the cache and puts out the image from there. So that's mm -hmm. definitely. Uh, uh, a plus point for that. Um, of course, it is not always clever to do that because if the data changes every day, you, you, you have more to do with the caching than really having a benefit from it. So that depends a little bit, but for any kind of background maps, aerial images that normally don't change so fast, I would definitely um, yeah, say yes. It should be interesting for you. If I may yeah. add tiny jot. So, um... As soon as you start uh, taking care of your performance of the service that you do, and we always do that. Well, most of us do it once they have, you know, like the feature fully featured and, and, and done product. Um, once you start with that, you get yeah, sort of hooked on it. So um, you would be surprised at uh, how many services can be very easily cached without too much ado and without too much configuration. So once you've set it up, and even if the cache only helps, let's say, 50% of your users, once they are, you know, like it, it's being filled up, uh, well, those 50% of your users are now happier and they will, uh, you know, like don't get in the way of them. And most of the time, caching is a very, very good solution. And um, there are, of course, exceptions, like very often changing data and so on and so forth. Um, but maybe it's time to, you know, think it the other way around. Like, for example, in the in the web, HTTP web, the, the standard for every request is basically to, you know, like, don't let it expire every time that any every resource has to be re-requested all the time. But, you know, all of mm -hmm. them have of short periods where they are, you know, like where web resources are suggesting to clients or browsers, hey, you can, you don't need to ask me any time for the new picture of Till, for example, it, it hasn't changed in the last two minutes. So maybe mm -hmm. it's time I could change on that thing. Yeah, caching, caching, caching. And thanks very much again. Uh, yeah, we're uh, approaching uh, time for the next uh, talk, um, Till and Mark, yeah. Very, uh, very interesting to hear and uh, hope people also learned uh, a lot from you. And uh, well, we'll be, uh, we'll be talking uh, soon, I think. Um, and uh, we go over to the, to the next uh, two speakers. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye -bye. Thank you. So here we have um, Tom, James Benting and Tom Christian from Spark Geo. And in the meantime, you could uh, try to share your screen. Uh, I think James will be sharing his screen. Yeah. You can hear me? Um, yeah. OK. And let's see. Um, well, there they will 
provide a talk called um, There and Back Again, Lessons Learned in Transitioning from GeoServer to Map Proxy. Again, Map Proxy, that's good to hear. Um, so uh, it will be dual presentation and James and Tom, they are from Spark Geo, a very innovative uh, company from British Columbia, Canada. And in short, Spark Geo helps customers to make sense of geospatial data and maps providing uh, analytics, insights and development support. And James.